This is a MIG welder. This is a stick welder. This is a TIG welder. And this is a laser welder. Ooh, look at that thing. That's sick. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's so futuristic. It looks like little test welds. They look beautiful. Laser helmet. For the last year and a half, I've been seeing these things all over my Instagram reels. And it sounds like they're the dream machine. They're meant to be super fast, super clean, way quicker than TIG welding, cleaner than MIG welding, with great penetration. But ever since it's been popping up, I've wondered how much of that is real. I want to know, is the hype worth it? And does something like this have a place in the metalworking workshop. And for full disclosure, part of why it took so long to make this video is I was waiting to find the right partner to do it with. So in comes X Laser Lab and the X1 Pro. We only agreed to this sponsorship under the condition that we can speak honestly about the product and my experiences with it. So I'm very grateful that they let us loose on their kit. And so let's bloomin' well get stuck in. First things first, I put it all on a cart because it's gonna two things, right? This MIG welder, inside it is the wire feed unit. So you see we've got our spool of wire, motor, wire feed. All the electricity and the wire comes out of the one cable. The difference here is the wire feed is a separate component and it needs some wire. I really hope this works, but the only wire I have spare is one millimeter MIG welding wire. One flaw about this product is actually finding information about like, oh, exactly what consumables you need, or what's the perfect wire for welding mild steel. I really struggle to find any of that information. And so at this point, I'm kind of shooting in the dark here, hoping the one millimeter welding wire works. We've got the feed roller set to the one millimeter size. Oh, and part of the great setup we got with X Laser Lab is that if you want to get one of these, there's a link in the description for 5% off, which is a great deal. And we get a kickback too, which is a delight. All right, boom, here we go. So now the wire is eventually going to come through this. Shove that in there. Okay, oh, 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 oh. all this is adjustable. It looks very far away. I don't know how that exactly wants to be adjusted. Missed some parts, didn't I, Jamie? <laughs> this go in. All right, it's all getting a little bit scary because the consequences of mistakes when you're playing with lasers are meant to be quite high. And I quote, high intensity beam can cause irreparable damage to eyes or skin. Well, hang on, I thought they cure blindness with lasers. <laughs> Laser eye surgery. Probably a little bit different to this one here. Uh, shock waves from plasma flows may lead to tissue disruption, may cause protein denaturation, and trigger photochemical reactions in cellular tissues. I, I lasered, lasered my finger. My finger. <laughs> <laughs> right, wire, it needs what they kind of describe as a cooling gas. It specifies nitrogen nitrogen or argon. Ah, sigh of relief, because I've got argon. All your worries are gone then. I know. Because you've already got it. All gone. Um, pretty simple setup for me because my argon hose has a quick connect fitting. There we go. Boom, we're in. Ugh. So this fella's gonna make the laser. That bad boy's gonna feed the wire. It all goes through into here. Lens is there, focus the laser beam down, melts the base metal, wire should come through and it should be just like MIG welding. It's two buttons, one, two, one, two. Oh yes, it's not only a welder, it's also meant to cut and clean, but we're, first of all, we're talking about welding. What is that? Process package selection. What is sus? It means suspicious. CS, surely CS is carbon steel. No, that's Counter-Strike. Oh my goodness. Gas? The gas works. And here we go, wire feed, if I press this, Nothing's happening. Right, oh, I understand nothing here. Wire feeding configuration. Oh, interlock. I bet that's this. All right, what happens if I now touch it? Now it's connected so it could weld. It's got an interlock that's only gonna allow me to actually send the beam when we're touching the workpiece. We need to get the wires starting to come out now. Oh, it just feeds super slow. It is feeding it just so slow compared to what I'm used to on like a MIG welder. Oh! <laughs> No! Turn that up. All right. Manual says we have to make sure that the red light is aligned. Mine was bang on straight from the factory. Don't really know where to go from here other than just try and squeeze the trigger. Now, this is not the same equipment as we use when we're doing regular welding. Protective equipment for lasers has some very important text up here that tells you the wavelengths of light that it will protect against. I'm gonna tell it one millimeter mild steel. First ever laser welding attempt here in the workshop. Three, two, one. Nothing happened. 
Okay. Oh, now it's on. Are you ready? In three, two, one. Whoa. Ah, that's so cool! It's definitely not welding though. To the untrained eye, I would say that we need more power. Let's go... 75%. No way! <laughs> Look how adorable that weld is. But it then stopped for some unknown reason, so we should do something about that. Let's try again. Now it is... Oh, but then it stops. Oh, yeah. But then you stop again. Why? Why are you not going? Now you're going. No way. Look. <laughs> <laughs> you're joking. No. Dude, it penetrated so much that it stuck it to our 16 millimeter thick honking work table. That's crazy. Let's try some automatic parameters. But why did you stop? Oh, now we're talking, hello. That is laser welding, boys and girls. Oh! Dude, look at that middle one, she's a beaut. It would be impossible for me to do a TIG weld that looks that pretty. And look at the penetration on the backside. And look, look at the penetration, penetration on the backside. Back 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 Damn, that's cool. Mate, when that wire feed is good, it just pushes you along. There is no skill required. That's another good looking one. Dirty steel, three, two, one. <laughs> I got no idea how strong it would be, but it went over that pretty nasty, dirty steel. Quite all right. Let's uh, try something thicker. This is millimeter and a half steel. Got some three millimeter steel. Simple butt joint. Let's see how the current settings do. Wow. Why are you being tricky? If I go CS 5.0, I assume that means five millimeters. Like it's just not, just not having a good time with it. I haven't touched anything. It now says steel two millimeters, power 10%. Why is it changing halfway through, guys? Come on now. What? I'm gonna reach out to their customer service. Right, they got back to me, saw a video of me welding, and said, Alec, uh, you're only meant to press this button, not that button as well. For some reason, I was pressing both of them. The top button changes parameters, and I'd have figured that out if I paid more attention to the manual. Let's see this thing fly. She is screaming, laying down gorgeous beads. What? Apart from this one where I went a little bit too fast, look how good those things look. Let's tack these two together. Hello. Wow, that is quick. Oh my goodness. I just can't get over the speed of this thing. But the welds look so tiny, you just expect. You just expect that it's gonna be super weak. That is. Bloody surprising. Look at that thing, Jamie. This is three millimeter or eighth inch steel. And there we go, it's now broken. And it penetrated about halfway down without any weld prep other than cleaning the surface. What about if we want to do the six millimeter steel? The welder does not say it is made for this thickness of steel. If you don't let the wire push it, like things go wrong. You just gotta let the wire do the job and that's a weird thing for me to learn. Blue me in heck, look at you go. Look at that thing. The welders are not beefy enough to do like a super deep penetration on the six mil steel. I do wanna see how this thing compares to the MIG and the TIG welder in terms of prettiness of weld, cleanliness, and in terms of efficiency. But we're gonna do it on this two millimeter sheet. So let's time two welds with the laser. Oof. Five inch inside corner. Bit of a rough start, got smooth towards the end. And then the outside. Oh, now that one is neat looking. Very, very nice. Now with the MIG welder. MIG welder puts down a lot of splatter outside of the weld. It's a lot dirtier. It's a bigger bead. Put a lot more heat into the steel as well. Inside corner. That's a bit ugly, Alec. 
Okie dokie. Next up is TIG welding. So unlike the MIG welder that feeds wire through the torch, TIG, standing for tungsten inert gas, has the arc stuck between this very high melting temperature tungsten and any filler material needs to be fed by hand. This is the most technically demanding form of welding that we've got here. Straight weld with TIG. This is definitely the slowest. Something's gone dreadfully wrong here. I think that's dirty material. TIG welding take two. Clean material is super important, and if you don't regularly practice your TIG welding, it looks as bad as mine. Let's have a look at the numbers. Laser welder, 15 seconds of welding. MIG, 40 seconds of welding. TIG, 120 seconds. Blue me neck, like, dude, that is, that is crazy. Here's our laser. Here's our ugly TIG, and that beauty gets done like eight times faster. In this test, I will say that tacking with the MIG or the TIG is a little bit easier, especially given the fact that I've got a little more experience with it. The laser seems to be great when you've got like a really nice straight run, but like when you've got to go over a tack or do a little tack, things get a little bit rough. So more practice required. During all this testing, I had the wire feed back here, but actually for best results, you are meant to have it pretty much touching the nozzle. So set it like this, then do your Allen screws up. Boo! Oh yeah! Look how beautiful that looks. You wanna go, Jamie? Yeah, I'll give it a crack. So what, are you saying that this is so easy that even a dumbass like me could do it? <laughs> I don't think the point is mostly just have a little bit of fun, Jamie. <laughs> what I've definitely found is you wanna let the wire push you. All right, Jamie, send it. Yeah, let it push you. Yeah, it wasn't really pushing me then. No? I think you need to let the wire push you more faster. Can you feel it? I can't really feel it, to be honest. No? no? Let me have a quick try. Oh, yeah, something's not working. Hmm, maybe I need to press the wire feed button. Oh, that's... Now we're cooking, look yeah, at that! Yeah, that's totally different. Look at that bead, man. Do another few. Look at that! It actually, like, pushes the workpiece. Yeah. I wish you don't have to do anything. They do one of those, uh, do a couple of those joints. <laughs> that looked even better than mine! Dude, that is even cleaner than my attempt. You did the tax way better than me. Mate, are you joking me? You're not a welder. Well, it, that looks like it was done by a robot. Jamie the robot. <laughs> the thing that I thought this could be useful for, you know, in my research, I figured it's probably gonna be like a thin steel machine, right? I think the perfect use case for it here in this workshop is I often have to use sheet steel to make boxes to make our canisters for titanium Damascus. They usually take me a whole morning to make when I'm MIG or TIG welding. What about on our trusty X Laser Lab X1 Pro? Yeah! Uh! Stopwatch starts now. I'm gonna try and fuse it without the wire. What happened? I lasered my finger. <laughs> <laughs> One mustn't take for granted what I just took for granted. With a MIG welder, it's very common that you'll like hold something a little bit and then tack weld it. I have just very cheaply learnt a very important lesson for all of us, which is there is a laser coming out the end of that bloody thing. Don't put any body parts on the other side because that was really hot. Oh, that fuses well. I think this is the technique for tack welding. Turn off the wire feed. Welding. <laughs> Dude. Get in. I have never, ever made a box this quickly. The amount of hours I have wasted on box making. Go ahead and stop the stopwatch. That took me nine minutes to weld that up. This definitely has a place for me. That was quick. So that is pretty incredible to me. Now I will say that I think a takeaway for me is I need to not treat laser welding like MIG welding. You'll see that like where there's a straight shot, everything's great, but I had a tack weld here, and so then it bumps me, and then we end up with this little frightful mess. I've got tack welds in the corner, so as I get to the corner, it bumps me, we end up with a mess. Since filming this, I have learned that for tacking, the best setting is meant to be pulse. Apparently it's meant to be way better for this type of tack. Oh! That's pulse and no feed. Oh yeah. That is definitely the way to be tack welding. So we should be able to solve the issues of going over tacks using pulse and no feed. Ultimately, even just as a welder, this has a place in my workshop as it stands. Slightly clunky UI, but 
you know, half a day in, we've now worked around it. I feel much more confident with it. But this is not just a welder. Supposedly, we can also use it as a cutter. Let's see, what can we cut? I think we're gonna have to change nozzles though. We've got this set of nozzles here. That should be our cutting nozzle. Take off the wire feed, swap that out. That goes on. First up, 0.8 millimeter steel. All right, here we go, cutting. Oh, hello. Wait, is it doing it? No way! Oh, Jamie, it was doing it the whole time. It's just that it's so thin of a curve that I didn't realize it. That's crazy. Let's drag in. Oh, you can go way quicker than I was going. <laughs> I was babying that thing first time around. This thing zips. I did not expect that. The kerf is so ridiculously thin. I can't believe that. And that cuts a lot faster than I would expect, but that is only 0.8 millimeter steel. Let's see if it can cut two millimeter steel. Is it doing it? It's freaking doing it. Oh no, we found its limit. But that's more of like a feed issue. I'm gonna increase my pressure so I can get that flow rate up to 20. See how she does with more pressure? Oh, yes. I think that'll do. How about some titanium? Oh, baby. <laughs> pretty sick. And now I'm pretty sure you can go ahead and mount this thing on a CNC table and with the right setup, turn this equipment into a CNC laser cutter, which is uh, pretty cool. Now, the last thing to figure out is this whole cleaning rigmarole. Mode selection, cleaning. Again, seen some crazy videos on the internet about laser cleaning. What's the scratch? Is it any good in a unit like this? Select mode cleaning, and that's it. It doesn't have any more information about cleaning. We've got that much there. How to clean. This is on their YouTube channel. Okay, safety clip goes on the torch. Oh, that's pretty sick. All right. There is no nozzle. We unscrew the cutting head. Safety clip there. Just how dangerous would this thing be if we bypass the safety systems? Yep. What if you've got a rag the other side of the workshop? Yeah, you'd have to be pretty careful about exactly where this thing is pointed. These things can be ridiculously dangerous. When I was reviewing this video, I saw myself doing a number of things that I'm not sure are particularly safe. This is new technology. With our MIG TIG or stick welders, there's 50 or 100 years of, of data on how accidents in the workplace happen. I know that absolutely every bit of kit here in this workshop can kill me if I make a mistake, but none of my other equipment has an invisible laser beam that can start a fire from the other side of the workshop. If that beam hits a colleague of yours, they're gonna be burnt, it could blind them instantly. So I think it's doubly important that if we got this kit in our workshops, we need to be extra conservative and extra safe. And I don't think you should use my video as a reference on perfect safety practice, because I think there's a lot of things that we could improve. Let's get back to it. We've got some rusty, nasty, dirty welds. Cleaning in three, two, one. It's doing something. It's like etched into it a little bit. Getting closer. It looks like it's just kind of like heating it up. I think it like burns off the rust. A little bit of rust on this mill scale. We'll see if that's any clearer. I guess it's got the rust off, but it does leave uh, quite a potent surface finish. This has been sat in the rain for several months. I'm progressively getting further away and increasing my feed rate so that we can kind of experiment with those finishes. Definitely burns off the rust, so I guess there's an application for it, but it's probably not what I'm gonna use it for a whole lot. At the end of the day, this for me is primarily going to be my new favorite bit of welding equipment for sheet steel assemblies like this three millimeters, eighth inch and under, where I need to quickly zoom, 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 zip them together, because that was very impressive. The criticisms I do have about the machine is I wish the manual had just that bit more detail on fine tuning the setup so that your first half day of like getting to grips with how it goes would be a little bit smoother. Once you got it set, it's great. I also wish it was just that little bit more clear on their marketing material that like you literally use MIG welding wire. You know, here I was thinking I'd need some like special fancy newfangled laser welding wire. No, that was a random reel of MIG wire that I just had up in storage, which is extra bloody cool. 
that all this new tech doesn't need anything that much fancier than what we've already got, which is the stuff we put in our MIG welder. Again, a massive thank you is owed to X Laser Lab. I'm bloody thrilled that we get to keep this in the workshop. This unit is their X Laser Lab X1 Pro, and the whole bundle that we've been working with in this video is their ultimate bundle. And if they sponsor this video, they're very kindly offering you a 5% discount if you purchase it when you click the link that we have in the description, which gets us a kickback as well. Thank you so much for your interest in this newfangled laser welding technology and being with us today. We look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye.